Greetings people from Stereo and beyond and welcome to a new video. It has been a uh, well quite a while since I have last updated uh, the channel but a couple of things have changed. Um, you can see some new equipment and uh, well in other news I also um, got my first actual job. Graduated and uh, now I'm working at an IT company full time. So uh, that has taken up a lot of energy and a lot of time. I've also been away two months um, after my graduation, um, just having a holiday, summer holiday. Uh, I started working uh, in September and I finished late July, so two months. Um, and a lot of things happened. Um, I, uh, well, picked up vinyl again. I will be making a video on that. And um, well, of course, some changes in the system. But the changes that I'm gonna show you right now have been quite recent, um, late August. So I have had uh, quite a while to uh, test them and um, give you my opinion. And um, well, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to my dream power amplifier, the Onkyo M5090. This thing uh, has been on my list ever since I started this hobby. Uh, this amplifier is the best amplifier Onkyo ever produced, besides the M510. The M510 is a different league. It's really hard to get in, in Europe, and even, even then it costs about eight to 10,000 euros. And that thing is truly insane. And maybe one day um, I might get it. It's, it's ugly as hell in my opinion, but that, that thing is a beast. But this is, um, has always been my dream amplifier, my obtainable dream amplifier. It is rare, it's not much around, um, so when I, I saw this, I jumped on it immediately. Uh, the guy that, that sold me, uh, uh, bought my old M5060, so uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, nice. But this thing is, is never gonna go. It's a completely rebuilt uh, M5090. Um, it's about the same as the M59, but the M59 is a special edition. You could get a little gold plaque that sits somewhere uh, down, down there on the amp. Uh, it's a personalized uh, a plaque with your name on it if you want to, but otherwise it's identical. Um, it's better than the 5508. It's, it's a bit better difficult to understand the whole amplifier power amplifier line from Onkyo but this thing is absolutely beautiful it has a glass um, plane on the front uh, it has these doors here with all the controls and all that stuff if you want to know more about it you can uh, of course research it but I also got the matching preamp the uh, 3090 and this thing is, um, well, it wasn't on my list, but I got it in the set. The man only wanted to sell the set, so I, I ended up buying it. Um, I always thought that I wanted a Prima Luna preamp, uh, Evolution 200. I, I really want a preamp with home theater bypass so I can, well, integrate uh, my big speakers into my surround. Uh, set up and have next to it a different stereo uh, speaker so I can switch because I also want to like buy certain speakers, test them, resell them, just enjoy the hobby. Um, but I, I'm not going to put three speakers next to each other. Not here and not in uh, my, my future place. Um, that, that hopefully will be coming along in like one, two years maybe. Maybe sooner, I don't know. Depends, I guess. First, I need to buy a, uh, a lot of stuff. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, this thing really surprised me. 
uh, the guy that, that sold it to me said this is a really good amplifier, a preamp, really good. If you open it up, um, it's it's so well built. Same goes for the 5090, but I knew that. I didn't know anything about this preamp because the only downside for me, this preamp is, um, uh, well, not uh, remote controlled. It's, it's all manual. That's a shame. But um, he said it's comparable to uh, uh, the Nakamichi 7 preamplifier. Some some um, letters come before it, but the Nakamichi CA7 or something like that. A really expensive preamp, really well regarded preamp. And, and this thing is, is comparable to that. And I believe that because the sound combination that I'm getting with this set, um, I connected them both with uh, my AudioQuest Yukon. Uh, they are both on stock power cords, uh, they have attached power cords, so I cannot uh, remove them. I might take them in for service and uh, let them remove that. Uh, but otherwise the 5090 is completely rebuilt from the inside out. The preamp uh, isn't. But to be fair, the load on a preamp is way less than on a power amplifier and it actually sounds really good really good also to be honest it might be surfaced i don't know i haven't looked inside it but the guy didn't didn't uh, uh tell me about it so yeah i'm still it sounds absolutely beautiful um let me turn it on here for you it it uh, doesn't have that much inputs um but the, 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 if you open this up like you get it with a lot of finish equipment, but if you open this up, you will not find a preamplifier anywhere in the world that is built like this. It has these really big modules inside with all bespoke components and, and stuff. And it actually has a waiting monitor, LEDs, or yeah, probably LEDs or, 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 or uh, incandescent lights, uh, that it tells you when it's uh, fully warmed up and the whole signal chain is, is ready to be played. And with the power amp, when you turn it on, it turns red at first with a little bit of a brighter LED and then it switches to white, which is quite dim. And I kind of like it because it's less distracting, but also a little bit of a shame because I do love seeing those meters move. But it's it's something that is, um, well, not, not in your face, not obnoxious. It's there but it's not it's it's subtle and i kind of like that but yeah this ladies and gentlemen is a dream come true and this for me um is so special because when i started i started out with a simple onkyo power amp well not a power amp but a yeah don't mind the trash but uh i need i need to clean <laughs> that amp it's a 88 10, something like that, old Onkyo integrated. But um, yeah, it's, it's, I always had a dream of owning this speaker and the Quad QL, QLS 29s. Uh, is it? Yeah, it's 29. I, 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 I research so, so much equipment, I get names all confused. This is the QLS 29. Um, with this this power amplifier pre-amplifier i probably will still uh, invest in either a prima luna e evolution 200 because i like that company um it's it's uh, dutch um and it's well built it's um uh, it tubes and it's well everything that i want it's expensive that's one thing but it will probably be the last preamp that i will buy so um, for now I have this and I'm really happy with it. Uh, I, I do miss the remote uh, control uh, situation here. You can see the light blinking and it is warming up slowly the LEDs uh, go further. It's about five minutes or something like that, not a lot. But yeah, the, the, the power amp is the star of the show. I, like the preamp and I will probably never get rid of it because it's really special. Uh, it also has a auto sensing moving coil and moving magnet phono stage inside. It has so many 
different controls and, and all the stuff. This is a really high-end uh, preamp. I have yet to try out the uh, headphone uh, amplification, but if that's good as well, then then it's it's really something. I um, did need to make some modifications because if you know uh, these these two uh, pieces, you know that they come with wood side panels. And if you look closely, you can see they don't have those anymore. And um, well, I built this rack specifically to hold as much equipment as possible um, with, well, still enough space to, well, uh, um, run cool and hold everything, but like be, be compact, like not be too high, not be too deep, too wide. And I, I like that. I don't want a really, really big, um, 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 well, center console, at least not in this room. I have been looking at, at something, uh, but probably not going to happen because this is custom built by me and I like this. But I also do love um, having uh, the wood panels on, on the side of... Uh, of them but i have them over here in my my closet i sold my audio uh, analog i wasn't planning on it but um i did an a b comparison and um i was able to sell it for the same price that i bought it so i uh, let go of it a uh, bit of a shame because that preamp um is probably the best preamp you can buy secondhand on the I would say a thousand regarding all its features. Um, of, you can buy that one under a thousand as well. Uh, that normally goes for like seven, eight hundred, but it's really rare, 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 and it doesn't have remote. So for a lot of people, it's not an option. Um, and still, in comparison, the audio analog is a really good piece. But, I mean, I, I, I don't have uh, a use for it. If I would run another system, I would probably go with a tube integrated or a um, um, actual audio analog integrated. So I don't have a use for it. And I'm just keeping it for the sake that, oh, it's a good product. But I would rather sell it on, use the money to buy something new and make another person happy. I, I will not sell this, probably, unless I get a really good deal for it, but it's a match to, to the 5090 build quality. It's, it's special and it is a really, really good sounding preamp. So, um, and, and it's really rare. Like I can buy another audio analog Bellini, but this, these don't come around. But these are the wood paneling and they are in perfect condition. And that's also uh, uh, the case with the power amp. These are for the preamp. And I would love to have these uh, on them. But yeah, I, I need to buy uh, another center console for it. But honestly, I like this a little bit compact uh, center console. So maybe in my house later, I'll mix it up. Put a center speaker on the stand, two racks to the left and the right with uh, like smaller racks, a really big uh, center uh, uh, plateau for the power ramp, I don't know yet. But uh, still, the condition is perfect. Mint, I, I uh, will never get rid of this set. These are really, really special. And the sound of them is amazing as well. I uh, do think I'm gonna close on that. Um, just just quick in, impression of the sound is, is at its place, I guess. I do think I had a benchmark uh, with the 5090 and the Bellini. That combination I would consider high-end. Um, this is on another level. The guy that sold me this amplifier uh, uh, only ran it in the summer on hot days. Because normally he runs two Krell class a monoblocks and i know how hot 
they can be like actually like if I just to give you a little bit of comparison, this room's about 60 cubic meter, uh, meters. If I run my home theater setup with that Arkham and that Denon, the Denon is only powering Atmos, but that Arkham puts out so much heat, it can actually draw two kilowatts from the wall and deliver close to a kilowatt to all speakers. It's insane. It's like 125 watts, eight ohms, seven channels, all channels driven. That thing is a powerhouse, but that thing gets hot. And I, I have some friends and, and, and colleagues that have like tube amps and class A amps and all that stuff. And they say in the summer, if it's really hot, because most of them have dedicated rooms and not air conditioned because for some reason we don't have that in the Netherlands. That's that's one thing the Americans have uh, have on us here in uh, Europe, but um, yeah, it's impossible to to run the, the, those kind of of amplifiers in, in in the heat that we get here in the summer, like 35, 40 degrees sometimes. So that's why he had this, but he wanted to sell it. He wanted to have something new. Uh, he had it a long time, so um, that's why he uh, he sold it, and. Um, yeah, he, he, he wanted to get uh, something different and I can understand that it was not his main amp But he said it was really comparable for for its size and for everything that it delivers I'm amazed that it got this close to, to that Krell uh, class A And that's the thing with these Onkyo amplifiers They have a technology called Servo, same with the preamp And there's actually a model of both of them Which uh, uh, you can use a special type of cable that Onkyo made a servo cable and it lowers the the jitter and the clock etc and it's all really special but it has technology built in from from the whole uh, servo uh, uh, electronics department from onkyo and they don't use it anymore but um, it's really special it has correct it they describe it as class a um without the heat it's not fully class a it's it's you do notice difference but it gets closer to class A than class D or any normal class of, of, of amplifier, like like class B, for instance, or something or something like that. And that's why I love it. It's a, it has a really rich, full-bodied uh, sound with a lot of muscle and a lot of power. This thing uh, delivers about what was it like 200 watts at 8 ohms, I believe. You can look the the specs up if if you really want to. I'm just here to talk about my experience. Uh, with it and the, 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 the this thing delivers it has better specs than um the the single top of the line Accuphase power amp that costs about twelve thousand euros and also the guy said i have listened to a lot of stuff but any amp under seven thousand nah, don't bother it has 66,000 microfarads of filtering on each side. The transformers are, are so, this thing weighs well over 30 kilos. It's, it, it's solid metal. It's everything is just displayed here. Just look how thick that is. This, this is heavy. This, this thing weighs a kilo. And I did not uh, expect that. This thing is really special. If you ever find this, ever, buy it. Um, it will be the best amplifier you will probably uh, ever obtain. And a lot of us don't have money for <sighs> Macintosh monoblocks or Equiface monoblocks or all that stuff, the really high-end stuff. And and we long for it. I dream of owning um, like actual like Macintosh um, 1.25 kw's uh, and monoblocks but that's that's like 30 grand i can't afford that and even if i could i will probably not um buy that i will buy something different so honestly i think that um i am reaching a point here in in my early 20s um when, when my system is at, at such a high high level that 
it will be hard for me to upgrade. So I am actually um, looking at some 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 equipment next to my main system. Um, I do have a couple things that I still want to do. Uh, I want to get rid of that Denon uh, uh, receiver and get an actual surround processor with a dedicated uh, amp for Atmos, but I can't find a good uh, four channel uh, power amp that's not uh, full size uh, like like my Arkham or something like that. Um, I would love like an Emotiva amp, one of the new ones, but we can't get them for some reason. Then I would love to like, uh, well, maybe in a couple of years when when deck technology has further improved, maybe get an R2R deck or something like that to experiment with. Uh, I love my topping D70. That thing is never going uh, going away. But like maybe a little bit more high and maybe a court cutest or something like that. But still, like I, I want to like have something with a full size power supply, and and with the court cutest I need to buy an S booster and all that stuff. And I don't want to do that. But yeah, the main thing that I'm looking at right now is uh, a really good pre, excuse me, a good preamp with home theater bypass, and I think I found it with Prima Luna. But who knows? I, I also looked at Electro Companiet, but with with that that price, you know, like it's insane. And Prima Luna actually hold hold their value. You don't see them um, secondhand all the time. And I talked to an owner of it. And they said, well, that's simply because the guys who buy the really good Prima Luna stuff, like the high-end Prima Luna stuff, don't ever sell it because it lasts a lifetime and you won't find better. So um, who knows, maybe in, in, in like a couple of months, I will have a Prima Luna here. Uh, maybe. Anyway, uh, I've been rambling way too much. I'm going to uh, finish it off here. Let me know, what is your dream amplifier? like actual dream amplifier but also what would be our your obtainable dream amp dream amp like something that is possible for you to obtain for this com combination i paid well under two grand that's reasonable i also sold my uh, m5060 for a good price to him so all in all i also sold my uh, uh, Bellini so I paid about a thousand extra it's not too bad considering the quality that sits here and that thing also had had a full surface and for this kind of amplifiers to have full surface that's about 500 euros because labor with these things like they are so complicated but um, yeah, who knows what the future holds. And if you work hard enough, you can obtain your dreams. And, and uh, that's, that's something that really hit home when I finally got it. Um, for a week, I couldn't believe it that I had this, this thing uh, in my possession. Same with the speakers. Like these speakers, I looked at them and that maybe when I'm 40, I get an opportunity to buy them and I'm 23 and I have my dream combination. And to be honest, I'm not searching for better speakers or a better power amplifier anymore. That's that's been done. Um, I'm I am. It's it's a strange feeling. But anyway, I am uh, stopping the video here. This is not meant to gloat or say like, look at me how uh, special I am. No, this is more in a way of of saying if you work really hard, and I always believe that to be bullshit. But if you work hard, and and you're you're honest and you're um kind to other people and well you're not a dick basically and and you well have something that you're passionate about and you invest a lot of time in it good things uh, will come from that direction uh, i i always searched the second hand market i looked out everywhere and then there it was and that same day i bought it a lot of rare items in the audio uh, world to go like hotcakes uh, one minute one minute they're online and one other minute they're sold so uh, i got lucky i saved uh, i i always bought the right equipment i resold my equipment not to make a profit but just to try it and resell it i will never be like a a, a flipper or or somebody that uh, tries to rip people off with audio equipment. Uh, I have a, a small list of things that I want to try. 
I want to buy them for the correct price and I want to resell them. And and uh, I'm always honest in, in the hobby. And if you invest a lot of time in something you're passionate about, good things will come out of it. That's, that's the bottom line. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. And uh, until next time, then I will be talking about vinyl and uh, how that changed. Because I did some really remarkable discoveries that you probably don't want to miss out of. Anyway, thanks and have a good weekend, everybody.